Now it's an honor to invite onto the stage our guest of honor, the Honorable Mrs. Carrie Lam, the Chief Executive of Hong Kong SAL, to deliver the opening address. Mrs. Lam, please. Anthony, Justice Tang, Professor Hayward, distinguished guests, speakers, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is a great pleasure to join you today for this IPCC symposium, organized in celebration of the 10th anniversary of the Independent Police Complaints Council. The Hong Kong Police, incidentally, is celebrating its 175th anniversary this year. And of course, the history of the police complaint system in Hong Kong goes well beyond 10 years. It can be dated back to the 1970s. So taking into account those years of existence, I would say that some form of police complaints investigation system has been in place in Hong Kong for five times 10 to the power one. <laughs> A significant milestone took place, of course, in 2009, when the IPCC was transformed into a statutory body under the IPCC ordinance. Justice Robert Tang, who chaired the IPCC before the transformation, will give us a keynote address later. While three successive chairmen leading the statutory IPCC, namely Mr. Zak Siu Tong, Mr. Larry Kwok, and Dr. Anthony Neil, will also share their experiences. May I take this opportunity to thank them all for their dedicated work, of course, including the members, the observers, and the staff, and enhancing public confidence in IPCC by thoroughly handling complaints against police in an impartial and transparent manner. The effective handling of complaints against any agency is easier said than done. And in the case of the police, it's particularly delicate and sensitive, as very often the complainants are subject to police investigation and enforcement. Particularly in the digital age we live in, information is transmitted to people, communities, and the world in a matter of seconds. That reality can transform minor differences into disturbing incidents, public protests, and much else. Coupled with threats from extremism and terrorism, it is increasingly difficult today for the police and other law enforcement agencies to strike the delicate and essential balance between safeguarding security and protecting personal liberties. It is against this complex background, one as global as it is local, that the work of monitoring bodies such as the IPCC becomes increasingly vital. The IPCC, I'm pleased to say, has responded commendably. In the decades since it became an independent statutory body, it has played a pivotal role in ensuring that reportable complaints against the police are dealt with in a proper, fair, and just manner. And for that, we are all very grateful. From 2009 to 2018, the IPCC received on average about 2,400 complaints cases a year. Among these cases of very different nature, I'm sure the public will remember the IPCC's involvement in a number of public order event-related complaints which drew keen public interest. Unfaced by the controversies around those cases, the IPCC demonstrated its determination and ability to uphold the values of independence, impartiality, and integrity in complaint handling. In 2015, the IPCC released a special report on a number of such cases highlighting its meticulous approach in determining the outcome. Such transparency helps members of the public understand the work of the IPCC and boosts public confidence in the police complaint system. The contribution of the IPCC is not limited to looking into complaint cases. It also makes recommendations on improving police procedures and guidelines on police operations all of which are made after thorough observation and engagement with stakeholders. For example, the IPCC has been conducting on-site observations at large-scale public order events and have been meeting police representatives as well as the organizers 
of the events. These efforts help the IPCC gain a multifaceted perspective on these events without affecting its impartiality. They also help the IPCC make balanced recommendations which can address the needs and concerns of different parties. Over the past 10 years, IPCC has made more than 140 recommendations to the police. In the year 2017-18 alone, IPCC made 26 recommendations regarding training for frontline police officers, police guidelines and practices. The majority of the recommendations made by IPCC have been accepted by the police and have helped enhance the police force service quality. They have also worked to reduce reportable complaints. I'm delighted to note. In 2009, the IPCC received about 4,000 complaint cases. In the past couple of years, that number has dropped by 60% to about 1,600 a year. I find it particularly noteworthy that there have been virtually no reportable complaints stemming from major public events over the past two years. But just before you form the opinion that this is um, uh, not a big issue, I should tell you that um, the police is handling about 10,000 public order events every year. And by the way, these complaints are not targeting the police. They're probably targeting against my government and myself. <laughs> and I'm sure the police the commissioner is now preparing and gearing up for another major protest to come. <laughs> So I look to you, uh, Commissioner Lo. Uh, <laughs> another key function of IPCC is to enhance the public understanding and awareness of the statutory duties. Through such activities as a Youth Day held in March this year and a school program launched since 2016, the IPCC has been sharing with secondary and primary school students its work and functions, as well as listening to their feedback. I was told that over 50 school visits have already been made under the school program, reaching over 6,000 teachers and students. In addition, the IPCC engages other stakeholders and the general public through various means, including seminars, website, and publications, which is also very well received. The public clearly appreciates the work done by IPCC and the performance of our police force. Confidence in IPCC rose 17% between 2016 and 2018, according to a survey done by the University of Hong Kong's Public Opinion Program. Findings of the 2018 Police Service Satisfaction Survey and Public Opinion Survey, also conducted by Public Opinion Program, were even more favorable, with net confidence towards our police force up 21% over 2015 results. Public confidence in the IPCC and our police force is also reflected in Hong Kong's standing as one of the safest cities in the world. Since 2014, the crime rate here has dropped below 1,000 crimes per 100,000 people. The crime rate last year at 728 is the lowest in nearly half a century. The people of Hong Kong have much to be proud of and much to take confidence in. The efficiency and effectiveness of our police is internationally recognized. Last year, Hong Kong ranked sixth in reliability of police services out of 140 economies in the World Economic Forum's Global Competitiveness Report. There's more good news from the Gallup 2018 Global Law and Order Report, which ranked Hong Kong fifth amongst 140 countries and regions. And in the World Justice Project Rule of Law Index 2017 and 18, Hong Kong stood fourth in the world in order and security. These and other outstanding results put a deserved spotlight, not only on our police force, but also on the remarkable job the IPCC does day in, day out, in enhancing the quality of our police force. If this 10th anniversary is reason for celebration of the ex excellent work done by IPCC, it is also an opportune time to take stock as well as to set new goals and higher standards. As we face new social challenges every day, it is essential for the IPCC as a monitoring body to continue to play its vital role in ensuring public confidence and trust in the police complaint system. Indeed, trust is the IPCC's currency. 
something it can never have too much of as it strives to live up to rising public expectations for an independent, fair, and accountable police complaint system. The government will no doubt do our part in supporting the IPCC. The IPCC's membership has grown by 50% from 18 in 2009 to 27 today. The size of the Secretariat has also doubled in terms of the number of staff. We will continue to provide the resources and support for the IPCC's operation and development in the future. And I'm sure that the IPCC can benefit from the experience and insight of local and overseas professionals, practitioners, and scholars. That is why I'm happy to see the IPCC, together with the Public Opinion Program of the University of Hong Kong, host today's symposium. Under the timely theme of building confidence and trust, role of IPCC in the evolving future, today's event features speakers from Hong Kong as well as Macau, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the United States, and the United Kingdom. I'm sure it will be thought-provoking. My thanks to the organizers for this symposium. I wish you all a very fruitful discussion and for our overseas speakers and participants an enjoyable and memorable stay in Hong Kong. So ladies and gentlemen, I hereby declare the IPCC Symposium open. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief Executive. Please remain on the stage. Please remain on the stage with us. We are going to take two photos.